A pleasure to meet y'all at last, and welcome back to films I'm willing to talk about again. Well, actually, let's just say, this is pretty much the first ever time that I'm actually doing a bonus episode. So, that's pretty much what's going to happen here. Today, we have ourselves the first decimal point episode, which can reflect on a bonus video. In the same way that I've been able to do so with films I should have talked about years ago, last year, I'm basically going to be doing it again this year. In this series, as well as the upcoming season two to films I should have talked about years ago. And I'll pretty much continue to do so with everything else related to this little franchise of mine. But today is where I'm going to be talking about Turning Red, which came out just about a month ago now. So. I'm more than happy to be able to talk about this because in all honesties of all Pixar films I've ever had the chance to be able to talk about in any way possible, this one actually surpasses the likes of a lot of Pixar films. I mean, this one is just so groundbreaking in many different ways. It truly does have a reprehensible fashion for allowing us to delve into the world of how decades ago, many people who were different than others because of their identity, they would not necessarily hold the significance as much as they did today because for a coming of age film that is actually set in the early 2000s, which I'm probably at most familiar with compared to all the other times that I got today because while I can certainly understand that why more recent events have a lot of significance and will always have a bit of a historical preference in today's society. Getting to know about the years of 2000 to 2007 were certainly my fair trade and I definitely consider them the most significant years of my life. Though of course I have my preferred years of which I have had the best possible times in whether other people might agree to disagree or otherwise. But turning red for the most part, has a much different feel to it than what any other Pixar film has done so far. As a matter of fact, when a lot of people have watched it, they not only give us a bit of a different perspective based on getting to know about other countries as well as their culture. This film actually has some of the best possible animation that you could have ever achieved in any single case. Every single release that's passed by so far, it does have a lot of ways for being successful, but this one just absolutely has everything that I might ever have the qualifications needed to ensure that I can at least say, or possibly modulate within my own mind, that it might as well just be an amazing, non-secretive masterpiece. And this just is saying a lot, but you know what? I might as well get into it right now, just because. Turning Red is in fact the story of a girl who was entering a new school in her teen years for the very first time. May Lee is in fact one of many different things out there that you might be able to find today. She's much different than others simply because She's got an Asian descent, which dates back to many centuries ago. As it's discovered in the film, her family has had a bit of a history of a connection with an ancient type of curse. At least that's how she identifies it, but May, of course, enters a little something that is associated with a transformation of a red panda. Something that one of her distant ancestors had had as a way of protection against oncoming enemies that dared to attack her own home. But many have been able to speculate on how is it supposed to be better or it could be worse for your own well-being. Well, it turns out that throughout the whole course of this film, after a certain incident happens in which that May simply draws a few things in her own notebook after school and... Her mother basically comes in, walks into the room, and what do we find here? Well, 
Her mother assumes that May has a crush on somebody and possibly wants to date him. A guy at a convenience store that they oftentimes pass by, along with some of May's friends after school. But eventually, when this does in fact get discovered, her mother actually drags her into the store and sets up a huge confrontation scene, which causes May to be very embarrassed and unable to sleep very well. And because of what happens here, well, let's just say that the next morning was not as easy for her as it was the day before then. Because what happens here is, well, she undergoes the you-know-what. The almighty transformation into a giant fluffy red panda that at first was horrifying to look at. I mean, that was a pretty funny scene of her in the, in the restroom with just little to no understanding of what had happened or how it happened. After some back and forth stuff, it eventually just goes to show that, well, this is apparently caused by some extreme emotional outbursts. Especially in moments where very stressful or very embarrassing moments tend to happen. Anything that could make her angry or very excited or whatnot could in fact cause the transformation to take place. But May, of course, does whatever she can to attempt to dissuade this sort of thing from her normal life. Out in school or out and about in the town with her friends in the middle of Canada. But probably the biggest thing out there that May's always wanted to do was to go see a concert with a boy band. And Four Town, of course, is having their one and only concert ever in this one area in Canada at a certain point in time, which is of course on the same exact day that May is supposed to have her own cure take place. A type of ritual which is of course done with the assistance of the rest of her family, whom has also had this sort of trouble back in the day. And it's also revealed that in order to keep their transformations from coming back, to keep this sort of spiritual entry from happening within them, they actually encase these sorts of red panda spectrums inside of some jewelry. Because eventually what happens is that by the end of the movie, May's mother is so mad that she accidentally breaks her own piece of jewel which causes her own panda spirit to fly about and enter her, and then eventually cause her to transform into a giant kaiju-sized panda, which of course then terrorizes the town and breaks into the large stadium that Four Town, May and her friends are inside of. So, I mean, it's just burnout of all things. A burnout of a lot of different feelings and a multitude of different changes. The kind of which that back in the day was not as possible, but these days we have done everything we possibly could to ensure that all people are treated equally, no matter who they are or what kind of choices they make. With all the talks of people wanting to go back to the things they were these days, just getting to know that the last 10 years alone, we've actually had a very, very, very close understanding to how it all works nowadays. Now it just seems like we're going through a lot of regression and as a result, there's a huge divide taking place between multiple people, people whom we thought we could trust, that we could love with every outstanding piece of respect, honor, courage, etc. But Turning Red actually did a huge favor for us by allowing us to delve into a huge world where in the early 2000s, we could actually make that stuff possible. And in the many years that had followed, up until the last couple of years, we were able to successfully put this stuff together in such a way that we would be able to live life perfectly fine. But yet, that's no longer the case now. We're now at a moment where when we might try our hardest, there's still a lot of oppression that's at hand. And the internet has a multitude of different methods to try and completely eliminate these kinds of people from existing. There's plenty of websites now that are just straight up erasing these sorts of LGBT people from existing. Even though they got popular over the years, they now decided to pull the plug on their careers and whatnot. That is just not okay by any means.
If there was really any kind of power I would really want to be a part of, it would be the kind that is worth eliminating those who are trying to eliminate the people whom are just trying to live their lives safe and free of harm or tyranny. Yet Turning Red did a huge service for us this whole year. So much of a service that I consider it my all-time favorite Pixar movie in recent years. Yeah a bit better than the likes of what we've seen so far. I consider it to be number three. Yeah, I feel like that might just be the best possible option I could have possibly picked out right there, but of course it is of course gonna be surpassed by the likes of The Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 1. So right then and there, that's pretty much all you need to know right there. Toy Story is always gonna be the biggest masterpiece that Pixar has ever made, period. Incredibles 2, amazing sequel, never a doubt in my mind that they all of a sudden could pull something like that off after so many years. And Turning Red was just amazing on its own. It probably doesn't really need a sequel, much like with other amazing masterpieces throughout the few decades that we've lived in, like The Iron Giant, just to name one. So in any case though, just by watching this thing three times, yeah, less than a month ago, was when this film came out. And then shortly after I was able to watch it on Disney Plus. And then I saw it again nearly two weeks later. And well, just two nights ago, before I even started talking about it here on my channel, I watched it again, just to keep it fresh in my mind for as long as possible because there is just so much going for it here. Phenomenal casting, incredible directing, and probably the best animation yet. And that's not a lie. There's a lot of other examples out there that showcase animation at its finest, but Pixar is called the king of CGI for a reason, and they will probably continue to do so for a long time. That is, of course, until maybe, just like with Blue Sky Studios, Walt Disney might try to completely cut ties with them and cause them to pretty much be completely killed off. Who even knows what will happen? So, that's pretty much all I will be able to talk about for today, but let's keep in mind I actually will be talking more about newer films, because I was able to watch a good handful of them over the past month or so, so do be sure to stick around as I will have some more bonus content like this as time goes on. So, if you want to see more of that on my channel, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.